The basics of Arch Nemesis are that as you fight enemies, you get pieces much like the metamorph organs which we all had to pick up and hated. This time, at least there aren't a billion per zone. Within your map, there will be multiple chained monsters which you can turn into an Arch Nemesis by empowering them with different modifiers. The modifiers you choose will make the enemy more dangerous and also make it more rewarding. The modifiers also matter because they can be combined into different recipes. These recipes will give you a new Arch Nemesis modifier, which you can combine further or make the ultimate Arch Nemesis for massive rewards and of course massive risk. Now unfortunately, there isn't a Headhunter recipe, but if you want a cool Headhunter themed variant of my logo on a shirt, you can get it at my official merch store down in the description below. For now, I'm going to be talking about how Arch Nemesis recipes work, and give some basic strategies that I'm using to maximize the profit, both when I'm feeling lazy and just want to get the most reward from the least effort, all the way up to when I'm really min-maxing, putting a lot of time and effort in, and trying to get the best things possible. So to start with, a simple example of a recipe combo that you've maybe heard of before, that's designed to give you the maximum possible reward from the minimum possible effort. To start with, you'll want Assassin. Assassin gives two currency rewards. Exalts are currency, therefore currency is good. You can make Assassin with a Deadeye and Vampiric. Be careful if you're in attack build, it does drop smoke clouds, which can make it a little bit annoying to fight. From there, you'll want to add Mirror Image. Mirror Image is created with Echoist and Soul Conduit and causes it to drop Scarabs. It also causes all the loot to be rolled two additional times and the rarest result chosen. This means the quality of the loot will be much better, but more on that later. Now that you have some basic rewarding generic stuff, how do you put it to use? You'll want to combine it with a Treant Horde. This is created by combining Toxic, Sentinel, and Steel Infused. When you're fighting Toxic, do be sure to dodge at the end, as those little green balls will absolutely murder you. So if you start with a Treant Horde, your Arch Nemesis will spawn a bunch of minions that each have their own reward types. This is important because this means the further modifiers can add reward types. And you'll want to do exactly that by adding Mirror Image. This means they'll all have Scarabs and all the loot will be rolled twice and the best result will be chosen. From there, you want to add on Assassin. Now, it will be two currencies plus Scarabs and it'll be rolled twice and the best result will be chosen. Now from here, there's two options that I can think of, both of which are fairly simple recipes from fairly common parts. The first would be Necromancer, which is a generic reward, but they're rolled two additional times and the best result is taken. You could make Necromancer with Bombardier and Overcharged. If you used this, the total rewards would be two generic, Scarabs, two currency, and all rewards would be rolled four additional times and the best result taken. Alternatively, you could do Rejuvenating. If you do this, be sure to take a Frost Bomb to disable regen, otherwise it'll be quite difficult to kill the Arch Nemesis as it'll have absurd regen. You can make Rejuvenating by combining Vampiric and Gargantuan. This adds one additional currency reward and causes the rewards to be rolled one additional time and the rarest result taken. Overall, these are pretty rewarding recipes and they're fairly easy to make. You don't really need to go through a multi-step process. But what if you did want to go through that multi-step process and you wanted the best possible stuff? From this point on, some of the recipes I'm going to talk about will have their own sub-recipes. I'm not going to get into every single part and every single sub-recipe, because otherwise this video would be far too long and a lot less interesting. However, if you want to find that information, I will put a PoEDB link down in the description below that has all of the recipes and you can search it for yourself. An example of a reward that scales really well with quantity over quality would be our Akali Touched. It gives a Div card reward and causes all reward types on the Arch Nemesis to be Divination cards. It's created by combining Corpse Detonator, Entangler, and Assassin. You'll of course want to combine this with the good old Treant Horde. Treant Horde is overpowered, so I'm going to mention it in every single Arch Nemesis. From there, you want as many rewards as possible. Now, in the next steps, you can also increase the quality, but let's just say you wanted quantity over everything. You'd want to use Evocationist. This adds four more rewards, which will of course all be Div cards from the Arakali Touched, it's obtained by combining Flame Weaver, Frost Weaver, and Storm Weaver, all of which are relatively common. If you instead wanted to increase the quality, you might want something like Tukohama Touched, which is three rewards which will be turned into Div cards, but they're all going to be rolled four additional times and the best result chosen. This is made by combining Flame Strider, Frenzied, and Rejuvenating. Then finally, to finish it all off, you could use something like Lunaris Touched. 
This adds one unique reward and causes each reward type to have an added reward, which effectively doubles you from 6 up to 13. This is made by combining Invulnerable, Frostrider, and Empowering Minions. This is a particularly dangerous fight, so would only do it if your build is really capable. Instead, you could easily just use Evocationist and Tukahama Touched and call it good. Now it's also worth mentioning that there are two other recipes that function similar to Lunaris. That is Solaris Touched, which adds a Scarab reward and causes all reward types to have an additional reward. I wouldn't use this when you're converting everything because Scarabs are in and of themselves quite valuable, but if you wanted to, it's Invulnerable, Empowering Minions, and Magma Barrier. You could also use Katava Touched, which adds a generic reward and doubles all rewards. The problem here is it basically functions the same as Lunaris. And it's a lot more expensive because it requires Tukahama Touched, Aberath Touched, Corruptor, and Corpse Detonator, which makes it a little bit impractical. And if you want to increase the quantity of loot dropped by your Arch Nemesis monsters, it's scientifically proven that anyone who likes this video, subscribes to the channel, and rings the bell will get at least one more reward. This is a hidden modifier, you'll never actually see it, but don't worry, it's there. Trust me, I'm a build doctor. Now up until this point, I've talked about the mechanic where rewards are rolled an additional number of times choosing the rarest result. But I haven't yet explained it because so far it's been icing on the cake. For the last example recipe that I want to use, it's going to be the main focal point. So I'm going to explain it here. Now I don't know exactly how GGG has coded the game. I don't know exactly how it works on a back-end level. So take this as a theoretical example that I'm going to use to try to make things a little bit more concrete. Let's say you have one currency reward and you use Tukohama Touched. This will now cause that currency reward to be rolled four additional times and the best result chosen. The game now pretends to roll the item as if it was dropping five currency rewards. Let's say it generates a Wisdom Scroll, a second Wisdom Scroll, a Transmute, a Portal Scroll, and a Chaos Orb. It then assigns a value to each of them based on their rarity. So the Wisdom Scrolls might be assigned a value of 1, the Portal Scroll might be assigned a value of 3, the Transmute a value of 8, and the Chaos Orb being much rarer, a value of 35. Then it goes down the list. So a Wisdom Scroll is the rarest thing dropped so far, it's right at the top, that has a value of 1. It's checked against the next thing, well, that's a value of 1, so a Wisdom Scroll is still the rarest thing dropped. Then we get to the Transmute, that has a value of 8, it's rarer than a Wisdom Scroll, so that's now the rarest thing, so that would now be the thing dropped. It then goes down the list and sees, oh, well, a portal scroll is less rare than a transmute, so we don't drop that at all, we just toss it out. Then finally, it compares the transmute to the chaos. It finds the chaos has a value of 35, which is significantly higher than the value of 8 assigned to the transmute. So it decides, okay, the chaos is the rarest, I've gone down the entire list, and it drops a chaos orb. This is important because you can also maximize the quality of the loot you're dropping and not just the quantity. For example, Shikari Touched, which adds one unique item reward and causes all rewards to be unique items. This is made by combining Droughtbringer, Soul Eater, and Entangler. Or another recipe that scales really well with quality over quantity would be the exceedingly difficult to create Innocence Touched. This adds three currency rewards and causes all rewards to be currency. It's made by combining Lunaris Touched, Solaris Touched, Mana Siphoner, and Mirror Image. So while it is very rewarding, it's also a significant investment. And that's an investment you'll want to maximize. You'd start with one of those two incredibly valuable rewards, add on top of that a Treant Horde, because Treant Horde is really good and it adds a bunch of reward types. And here's where you want to focus in on getting the best possible loot rather than just as much loot as possible. For this, you'd use the Brine King Touched. Brine King Touched adds three rewards, which will be converted to either unique items or currency items, but it also says rewards are rolled six additional times choosing the rarest result. You can combine this with something like Aberath Touched, which adds three more rewards, so you're now adding six additional rewards, and causes rewards to be rolled four additional times, for a grand total of ten additional rolls. This means all the loot that you drop is going to be significantly better. If you've seen pictures of people getting double exalts from their arch nemesis, this is probably how they did it. So you combine everything, and what you get is an arch nemesis that drops either a ton of currency or a ton of unique items. It rolls them for rarity, so you get a lot of rarer items, a lot of tier 1 uniques, potentially including things like exalted orbs and mirrors if you're lucky, which of course is dropped by both the Treant Horde and all of its minions. 
This is by far the highest investment thing that you can do in terms of Arch Nemesis. You could do something similar with div cards via the Arcali Touched. However, I didn't have very good success with that. I found that just going for quantity over quality was a lot more effective because rare div cards are still pretty rare and I could just get a half X in stacked decks because people love to gamble and they overpay for them. So hopefully this video has helped to lay the groundwork for how you can use the Arch Nemesis recipe system. You can either use it to get the maximum rewards from the minimal effort, get the most drops possible, or the highest quality drops possible. There are of course a lot of different combinations, and it's really hard to say what the best is, because at the end of the day, the best thing to do at any given time is most likely what you can do with the pieces that you have. You really don't want them to pile up to the point where you have to start deleting them. And since you can't trade them, it's not like you can just wait around until you only have Innocence touched and just roll currency all day. I guess you could, but then you'd lose value from all the other things you could have rolled along the way. There's also several recipes that I didn't talk about here because they weren't quite as good as the examples that I gave. Things like Legion, Breach, Delirium, Metamorph, Blight, or Essence rewards aren't worthless. But they're not quite as valuable as the big shiny uniques, currency, or divination cards. So, while I didn't include them in this video, if this topic is popular and you want to see more recipe combinations that I've been using, especially to use up some of the parts not mentioned here, then let me know down in the comments and I'd be happy to make that. The last piece of advice that I'd give is know your limits and absolutely never, ever, ever do Trickster. It's not worth it. I know it looks like it has good rewards, but the damn thing just runs away from you constantly. So, unless the Waka unpronounceable name map is your favorite map in the game, you probably shouldn't be doing that one any more than once for the challenge. But now, I turn the question over to you. Where have you found success in combining recipes for Arch Nemesis? Are there any really cool combos that I didn't talk about in this video? Were you a bit lost? And if you were, do you not have a better idea of how to apply things so that you can find success? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. And again, a special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. If you want to support me, you can do so by clicking the links down in the description below or on screen right now. You can also support by making purchases through my Nexus page. Or if you just want to chill and hang out, be sure to join the Discord. Again, links for everything are down in the description below. Thank you and have a great day.